Um, yeah, so, so I am myself uh, one of the co-founder with, uh, you know, Joachim and friends and others of uh, the IFAD DAO. Uh, so we've created the, the DAO three, point, uh, three years and a half uh, ago when we started working on seeds, you know, this ecosystem. I don't know if you heard of seeds, but we have created a full ecosystem for regeneration uh, with a currency and economic system, a community, a constitution. Uh, so there's a lot to say there, uh, but I guess uh, focusing on IFA, we have uh, had the need to organize ourselves, you know, for this project and we've uh, formed and created our own technology uh, for us to, to organize, uh, you know, the, the activities around, around seeds. And uh, <clears throat> this product becoming more and more sophisticated and more and more useful for us, we saw that it could actually become a product for others to, to use. Uh, so we are on this journey, you know, um, going to market, if you like, with this uh, uh, DAO builder solution, uh, which is really comprehensive and contains everything that an organization needs to operate. So we are uh, talking about an organization in a box, uh, you know, as a concept, uh, so that every group forming a, a group of people, organization willing to uh, to work together, to collaborate together in this, um, you know, new, new Web3 space can use our technology and get tools to vote, to govern themselves, to um, get roles, um, you know, define assignments and also, uh, uh, you know, create uh, this environment where uh, the contribution accounting is in, this, in the center of everything we do. Um, as well as the tokenization, you know, of these contributions. So that's really a recognition of the value created by the group uh, through, through DAO. And of course, our main focus is the transition uh, to a more regenerative and equitable world. So uh, we are talking with different ecosystems like yourself, uh, you know, and others, uh, ma massive projects, you know, that are willing to, for example, um, you know, tackle uh, SDGs tackle, you know, climate climate change issues, climate resilience issues, and we want to organize themselves as an ecosystem. Um, so our tool can also, you know, create ecosystems and uh, allow uh, those organizations to and those group of, of people to to organize themselves in a um, in a contribution uh, and uh, collaboration uh, mode. Uh, yeah, and so so that's really my my intro. Uh, maybe you, Akim and France, you want to, to add to that? Yeah, sure. I can jump in. Um, thanks, thanks, Alex, and hi, Rufus, Theo. Um, so yeah, uh, my background: computer science and business. You know, I always try to bridge the two sides here. Worked in HR consulting for too many years. Um, started a series of smaller organizations, uh, but always ended up in the sort of uh, what's possible in improving ways of working, you know, ways of collaborating, bringing people together um, for all walks of life into these new trustful spaces, right? Uh, making the connections, deeper connections, trusted connections. And then suddenly this DAO thing came up, you know, out of nowhere. And that's my focus right now for HiFi is to develop and uh, dive, you know, dive, dive deep into the notion of uh, what the DAO can bring in, in, in the Web3 context. Um, I was just reminded, you know, yesterday I read an article about uh, RSS feeds, uh, Dave Weiner, you know, in Web1, you know, uh, when, when it was possible to create these open networks, right, these decentralized networks that Web1 was all about, right, um, reminded me of my mosaic uh, net browser, you know, my next workstation in the basement there. The first kind of technology, Web1, was actually tiny, right, compared to Web two, you know, and now I believe Web three is another iteration of this thing that makes it, you know, another explosion, another leveling up of a much much bigger playground um, that is happening right in our in front of our eyes here. So, so for me, this is an exciting journey, and I really want to push that forward to the edges. You know, how far we can take this idea of uh, a DAO, individual DAOs, groups of people moving into startups and then ecosystems, entire ecosystems, right? Bringing all of these parties together in these new kind of rhizomic networks uh, that are arising out of this. So I'm really excited to be here and see what we can do together. Over to you, Franz. 
My turn. Thanks, Joachim. Thanks, Alex. Good to meet you both. Uh, Rufus Theo, checking in from, from Switzerland. So I just actually just crossed the border over from, from Liechtenstein a couple hours ago, meeting some partners here. Um, a little bit towards myself. Uh, I'm a global citizen with cultural roots in both Austria and Guatemala. Very contrasting cultures I had the chance to experience and never really fit fitted in either one. Uh, kind of was able to see the whole cultural paradigm from an early age and question the, the ways it's built in scarcity. And of course, I had to go through my own individuation journey where, of course, if you don't fit in a place, you kind of figure out where your tribe is and eventually gathering towards the tribe and realizing, hey, there's a whole universe out there where we have much more in common than we have what separates us and really... Uh, realizing the role of money in that vehicle of separation where it's all about divide and conquer, where we have been divided in all multiple ways. Uh, my background is essentially biomedical engineering. I've been working in international development uh, at the heart of the beast, so to say, from the World Health Organization to the UN to the Clinton Foundation. Went through that, realized, okay, the, the whole money chasing paradigm is not necessarily what's satisfactory. There's more value out there than, than can be made. And that's my journey into the whole crypto space and DAO space and Web 3.0. We're complementing what both Alex and Joachim have said. You know, we're in this beautiful space, this DAO moment where we're actually now being able to break away from the monopoly of money and enter into this space of value-based networks where communities across the planet can align around shared common purposes and shared values and also figure out ways where that value can be now uh, acknowledged and tokenized and we're essentially bringing back the multiple dimensionality of what capital means and we have direct ways to govern that and what's exciting to me is that from that place of empowerment it really becomes a a uh, peaceful fight where essentially power over others becomes redundant. So what we see right now in the tools that we have been building for uh, four years or four years plus now, uh, we have a very interesting way of kind of how we started is we went, uh, looked far into the horizon, horizon three, so to say, with seeds, where we had created sort of like the most horizontal DAO you can imagine where you have uh, global citizens and stewarding an entire ecosystem and building trust from the most broadest way. We had a lot of learnings there and we're now going back another horizon, horizon two and horizon one, where it's all about building trust. And as Alex was saying, you know, we needed to build these tools to also self-organize, to create the horizon three uh, ecosystem, which Seeds is all about. And now into this spaces where the level of trust and coherence can be more adjusted to the different values of this ecosystem. And that's where we are right now, where we, we've released the DAO maker tool uh, already more than a month ago. And we have this incredible uh, demand of ecosystems rising up to the opportunity from, you know, women weavers to bioregions to uh, cooperative startups, uh, corporations all wanting to kind of play in this multi-tenancy ecosystem where we are essentially co-invested in each other's success, what I like to call economies of abundance, where there's no more scarcity sort of dividing us, but it's all about uh, game theory, where the ultimate game is the game of collaboration, and that becomes a, a really fun uh, pathway to explore. So that's where we're at right now. I'm really good to be here and look forward to to hear more about you, Theo and Rufus, and see where our missions align. Thanks so much. So maybe I'll kick off with a brief introduction and pass to Rufus. So yeah, I'm lovely to be here. I'm Theo, kind of professionally, my, my background is in consultancy, um, and I've got a particular kind of interest and expertise in off-chain forms of decentralized governance. So kind of have worked in holocratic organizations in the past and also as a consultant helped other organizations transition to, to systems such as that. So I'm very interested in kind of the, the overlaps and divergences with, with DAOs and the tools that you guys are implementing and, and those other forms of, of organization. Um, I work at Life itself. 
um, as well as kind of like our ongoing inquiry into, into Web3 and kind of making sense of the broader ecosystem. I think particularly from a more social scientific and economic perspective, which is a, a background Rufus and I share, um, has been around incentive mechanism and incentive model design to kind of like um, ensure value distribution that comes from data sharing. So working with the European Commission and other such organizations, particularly around environmental data sharing, um, and looking at how we can incentivize that and ensure that kind of we have value distributions that, that benefit sort of society and, and sort of across value chains. So that's me and I'll, I'll pass to, to Rufus as our, our resident game theory expert. So I'm sure there's a lot to pick up there as well. Sure, uh, I'm Rufus. I'm one of the co-founders of Life Itself. I have been involved in, I guess, you know, what, I've been I've been an entrepreneur, a serial technology entrepreneur, or, and not particularly no, so social entrepreneur, founding nonprofits. Um, and I've been involved since since the beginning of Web One, I guess in how do we make a fair and freer information age? I founded an organization called the Open Knowledge Foundation, among others. I've also been very interested in consciousness and con human growth, like personal development and growth for many years since being, you know, since my teenage years. Um, I've, med I've been a meditator for over 20 years now, and I'm a Zen Buddhist. And yeah, I'm very, very interested in how we make a radically wiser, well world. That's the purpose or the kind of mission of life itself. And yeah, and that, that, I mean, I can talk a bit more about life itself, but you know, we're a community of people seeking a wiser world. We run several, a variety of projects, one, and one of which, and kind of organize kind of organization under the umbrella, one of which is labs, which focuses on, um, you know, systems design and, and, and ecosystem um, kind of understanding and sense and kind of collective sense making. Uh, does strategy consulting and other things around this kind of work. And we've been doing this sort of deep dive into uh, Web3. Um, I've come across blockchain for a long time and, and crypto since I was in this kind of type of space for about at least eight or nine years. Uh, for example, I went to the first Ethereum uh, dev conference in London in 2015, I think. Yeah, that's, that's an introduction to myself. Great, thanks for, for this introduction. So um, yeah, I guess we wanted to really have an open discussion to see how we can you know, contribute to what you are creating. Uh, if we can be you know, useful bringing in um, some of the, the experience we had, building the DAOs and, and, you know, and, the, and the process we are in, in terms of you know, activation of ecosystems, onboarding of uh, you know, those large networks, uh, towards you know the uh, transition to regeneration and to different whole system model models. Um, so yeah, um, do, yeah. Please, Rufus. Yeah, I mean, we, I guess I I didn't know if the context was cool for us. W that's that's interesting. I mean, we don't we're not we're not seeking to transition to a DAO ourselves. Sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah. or, or anything, yeah. but I mean, yeah. we would love to understand more about. Um, I mean, I come across Haifa and and Seeds uh, a while ago, okay. um, but I'd love to understand maybe more about about the projects and and, and do, about. Yeah. I have quite a lot of questions, having spent quite a lot of time in the space that I still find unresolved for myself. So I would love to understand at least just your perspective. Sure. Um, uh, but yeah, like that would be that would be that would be great um, from my perspective. But is that does that work for you guys? Yeah, definitely, definitely. We can share a few slides we have uh, on you know ecosystem activation and. Uh, I prefer to go on a Q and A approach if okay. possible. Right. Slides okay. are appropriate. Yeah, no problem. I'm happy to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. I mean, can I start with one question, which is: so, are you guys volunteers, or is there a staff to hire for? Yeah, so so we have defined roles and we have remunerations. Yes. Um, so we are uh, all, if you like, independently working for IFA, for, for the DAO yeah. itself. Uh, but we all receive a compensation for our contribution. And the way it works is that uh, either on the DAO, you submit a one-off contribution. For example, when you do a quest, 
when you fulfill a certain mission, you know, in, in a limited period of time, or yes. you can have a role and an assignment that is yeah. an ongoing, you know, assignment. And, and so can I come back then to question, which is, an, and how does sure, sure. you guys are working in that sense within the Haifa DAO, right? Yes. And, and yeah. how does Haifa raise money to pay you guys? Or do you have a revenue stream? Yeah, so, uh, so please uh, uh, don't hesitate, Joachim and friends, to, to uh, take some of the questions. But um, yeah, so we have raised, um, so we have distributed $3 million of capital so far yeah. through, the, through the DAO in remuneration and uh, uh, software costs and things like that. You know, everything we had to, uh, to pay for to, to operate and to yes. create the technology that we are using for seeds and for, for IFA. Um, and uh, we've raised this money uh, through different channels. Uh, so the first channel was, uh, you know, members interested into um, uh, the project, willing to, to participate and to contribute with uh, cash, you know, uh, to the endeavor. So we have raised a, a part of the funds like this. Uh, then another part was that IFA has been paid by the seed ecosystem to create the tools, um, you know, that we have created for seeds. Uh, so we have been paid in seeds, uh, you know, to do so. And there was a way to onboard people, you know, to, uh, to have them uh, being embarked into the ecosystem. That was also a source of uh, uh, fundraising. And we, the, the rest has been raised through, uh, you know, the treasury management, uh, because we were uh, holding the, uh, you know our treasury on uh, cryptocurrencies, so you know benefiting from the from the growth of the market at the time. Uh, so we have uh, raised money, or at least increased uh, our treasury uh, through this channel. Uh, you know benefiting from the the increase in price of uh, of cryptocurrencies. Mm. So, go ahead, yeah. yeah. To, just to add to that, and, and to 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 go a little bit deeper into the question. Um, you know, the, the journey we've been on for quite a while now, right? So uh, Haifa sort of starting off as, you know, a group of people meeting in Bali four and a half, I don't know, five years ago um, and having this, this, this idea, right? And then wanting to realize that, right? So going yes. beyond the idea of a simple community where you make the connections, you have the people, but you can't really take action, right? So for that, we decided early on to move into a more of an organizational context, right? Yes. If you look at communities today, right? I mean, the classic definition of a community goes back to Etienne Wenger, right? Uh, with the communities of practice, right? Um, these are vehicles really for people to come together to build strong relationships, but they're not really vehicles to actually take action and do something, you know, yes. uh, especially if suddenly funding comes in, you know, you have, as in our case, suddenly private investors coming in wanting to support this now, you know, formation of a venture, right? And for that, suddenly you need something like of a structure, right? We didn't want to go the route of a corporation, right? Of a C corporation, of a, you know, traditional, uh, you know, yeah hierarchical structure we wanted to try and as, as Theo mentioned um you know wanted to try new forms of organization holacracy right. sociocracy is really our, yes. our go-to place for building this flatter organization right yep. and then immediately once you step into this you know away from the community into an action-oriented purpose-oriented sort of goal-driven environment you need structure right you need to say as as alex said who's who's taking on a role here you know who's doing what what kind of sort of circles sure. exist in this organization right and and that's exactly i think where the DAO comes in to support building this kind of structure that's still kind of sort of on the side right it's not front and center and oh god now we are we're a company right it's still no, no. like helping people you know stepping into this new world into this new environment um, without abandoning the idea of it's a human to human connection right it's a decentralized human organization that we're building here right? absolutely and I, so I, i'd love to to pick up on kind of what the the advantages that you guys have felt that that organizing as a DAO has brought say for example as just being uh, like a, a holocratic organization but with a more traditional legal entity underpinning it but just to kind of play back from what you said Alex so basically from what I understand Haifa has done like an ICO or some kind of equivalent thing to, to raise like initial funding through that has also been commissioned by the seeds ecosystem to develop these tools which are then used by seeds and seeds again kind of did something equivalent to an ICO or some kind of like member member based crowdfunding or investment which is where it's got this money and then you've also had crypto investments of your own which have kind of bolstered the treasury so those are kind of 
if I've, if I've understood right, the three revenue streams, which are then kind of paying you and feeding into this DAO structure. Is that right? And, you know, we might tweak the terminology of ICO because I know. Yeah, you, we didn't do an yeah. ICO, uh, but uh, yeah, we had three sources of funding, uh, you know, private investors, the work we've done for the community, for the seeds yeah. community, uh, paid in, uh, you know, in seeds. And, um, and uh, the third part, which was the management of the treasury benefiting from the uh, from the, yeah. um, the increase of the market at the time. Can I ask just a question then? So yeah. the private investors, did they pay you, did they buy tokens in the DAO or did they just give you cash that you hold in a bank account? Yeah, like how, so, do you, how do you pay yourselves in the end? Do you guys get paid in, yeah. in, in, in cryptocurrency or do you guys cash that out into dollars or euros to pay your rent? multiple multiple things there so for example what we're able to do with this uh, DAO ecosystem is to assign or essentially account for contributions in multiple forms of capital so at the very core of the engine of what the DAO is essentially is a tool to account for contributions and just like we you know we can contribute with time we can also contribute with money Yes. And at the same time whenever there's a contribution going in we are able to mirror that sort of in a reciprocity format in terms of minting tokens. So essentially as a decentralized organization, you can, as a group of people, mint a sure. token that represents those contributions and therefore also manage. And we, when we have the roles, the roles that we create and we approve as members in the ecosystem, you're able to uh, select the different compensation formats that you can, whether it's uh, deferred payment, whether it's from the the Haifa token itself that represents all of this aggregate contributions going in. If the treasury allows, uh, if there's other tokens that are represented by essentially our, our HUS dollars, essentially our own stable coin that's able to be redeemed for other cryptocurrencies, that's another layer of payment. And based on what the treasury is, you're able to balance that out between these different forms of payment and third, there's uh, the whole component of voice, which is also very important where every contribution also is meriting a voice into the governance of the ecosystem. Sure. So that essentially, it's a stewardship owned uh, organism, living organism that is able to adapt and retract according to what value comes in. So that really makes us resilient so that we're able to kind of go this uh, processes of boom, bust, boom, bust, and learn from each other and learn from those processes and continue optimizing to find uh, ways to, to make most of our resources and continue that growth. And at the same time, the beautiful thing of all of this is that it's all transparent. It's essentially creating a, a layer of trust between humans that is represented essentially in a token. And I think going back to Theo's question, you know, that's uh, the most interesting part that I see the value of this uh, DAO ecosystem that we're creating a new economic system that is has the ability to compete in the open market against the current financial systems as well in a place that is no longer extractive, but it's uh, essentially non-inflationary, inflationary, non-debt-based currency, but essentially a token economy that starts giving value to these alternative forms of economies and forms of governance, where it's all about giving value and voice to its members. And, and these ideas of, of contribution tracking and kind of like value allocation mechanisms seem to be quite central to, to your guys' approach and how the DAO operates. So could you maybe talk us through like a, a toy example of how, how that might work in reality? So let's say kind of, you know, the, the five of us are, are going to build a, a dig a ditch or build a bridge. And we've kind of got maybe there are different like tasks that fall under that so going and gathering supplies or so on and so forth and then we might have different roles be it kind of you know the site manager the laborer sort of so on in our ditch digging operation so how might like how does the hyper dow work in terms of tracking those differential contributions that say if we want to do it as a cooperative but also then allocating value across kind of differential roles and different right. tasks and, 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 and i want to add something here which is that the thing that I, and i'm just gonna be honest i struggle with is that a lot of the things people describe sound like you can do an existing company with a spreadsheet. And then like, so the things that I'm interested in here, particularly is to explain to me in a DAO situation, because like obviously people today track that people say, I'm going to, I'm going to go dig the ditch. Let's just, let's keep it even simpler. Like there's just three of us or five of us are going to dig the ditch. 
classic problems come up, which is, um, are we going to be paid for time or outcome? You know, like I'm fast at digging ditches, so I'm going to dig, I'll dig twice as much ditch as Theo's going to dig, but do I get paid by time or by outcome? You know, all of the conflict and, and stuff that's actually interesting about value, right? Like it's easy to write down, like I don't understand old currency. We could say we value lots of things and we should put, and it's not hard to put monetary value on if you want, it's that people don't. So I'm just trying to understand a bit in this case, which is how does the DAO make it easier to assess people's contribution and resolve conflicts? I'm particularly interested in conflict. What happens if Theo and I disagree about how much my contribution is worth in this situation? What happens in high for DAO? Or what happens, do we, you know, what happens when roles are underspecified? Like anyone's actually run a real organization. Yeah, you can write job descriptions or you can write uh, result-based stuff. But, you know, economists study this for years. Result-based compensation works if you're a trader on Wall Street, potentially, or you're cleaning cars. In most other complex situations, it doesn't work very well because there's huge underspecificity in what you're describing. So what happens? I'd like to know a real story. And if possible, like a real example, it might be maybe or like a concrete example of what happens when there's conflict in the DAO over whether someone's fulfilled a task or not. Like, let's say you've set some payment or someone has done a role and it hasn't gone well. Like they didn't do what you thought they were going to do. And who's you? Like, can they pay themselves? You know, like, how does, yes. the, how does the money get paid <laughs> right, to them? Right. <laughs> I mean, these are exactly the questions we tackled over the last three and a half years. And we came across all of them, Rufus, right? Yeah. Um, so we have about- well, one right. Over 15 years of trying to build whole <laughs> yes, right, right. So I'm interested. So I'm telling you, you know, more about the DAO context now. What, what is the difference if you use a DAO for these kind of uh, conflicts that are coming up inside the organization, right? Um, just a quick time check here. We have to move on at uh, noon, right, to the next meeting, Alex, just to confirm. Mm, half an hour, yeah. Half an yeah, hour, right? Yeah, so, right. 30 minutes more. Yeah. Right, right. So, so, so let's get, I love that. That's a great idea to have a sort of a, a concrete example here. Let's all start digging a ditch, right? We're coming together here. What do we do first, right? I think the first thing is we recognize each other. We recognize the talents, the skills that we bring to the table, right? Who you are, and we build sort of the trust, the level of trust that I trust you with us. I know you have skill sets. You're more of the planning guy. Theo is more of the doing guy. He can start picking up the shovel and start, you know, digging right away. Um, so for me, give it away. <laughs> Maybe that was a tattoo. That, that... I, I can dig with you too. Yeah. Wait, wait. So, carry um, on. so now we suddenly see that there's certain skill sets, certain you know different ways of of starting this together, right? Um, now what we want to do next is uh, sort of figuring out um, to come to a place where we agree on what the next steps are, right? We need some kind of agreements. And that's exactly where we step out of the community that says, yep, we kind of are together and agree to us more of a formal approach to agreeing on the next steps, next tasks, right? Um, and this is where we can say, I have a proposal, you know, Rufus, I want to start planning here, right? And I can do this either I submit a quest into the system, right? So this is more outcome driven, you know, this is to say, in four weeks, you're going to see my plan that lays it out in all glory details, right? And then you put it together in a proposal and you set it up, you put it up on the DAO, right? Everybody sees it, it's all transparent and visible, and we read it and we all have a, now a way to decide this is the way to go forward, right? We can do some sense making beforehand, right? Ask questions about this, you know, this, this part is not clear to me, you know, elaborate, maybe change. And then comes the point where we have to make a decision, right? To say, this is the plan. This is the source now, right? Let's vote on it. Let me go through the voting process. And there are different ways to do that in DAOs, right? We have a very flexible process to say it's 80-20, you know, it's 80% unity and 20% quorum, at least 20% of people must show up, right? But you can go all kinds of directions. You can do consensus building, right? You can say 100% on board, you know, 100% agreement here of all people. You can say, you know, majority vote, you know, 51% good enough, right? Um, or you can do all kinds of things. You can even consent-based decision-making, you know, that's happened very often in sociocracies and holocracies where one objection stops the whole thing, right? And if there's no objection, let's move on, right? Even though there's some critical voices, but they're not blocking anything, right? Great, let's move on. But the point is you come to this agreement, right? To say, your plan, Rufus, it, this is it, right? And we voted in the agreement. And you can see now on the DAO that this was voted in on a certain time of 
point of time and who did it and so forth, right? Just, yeah, just go to ahead. check so far, just to check something, all of this can be implemented. I'm just, and I'm not saying that doesn't mean you can't, like it, things could be easier. Like, I, but all of this sounds like I could be a company or a nonprofit or whatever, a co op. And I mean, co op's a bit more complicated because it does build in, but and build in decision, you know, participatory budgeting. I'm, I'm just, and I'm not saying that, by the way, I get the emails easier than snail mail. I get that, you know, maybe you've got tools on, on the blockchain. I, I mean, I, I'd like to understand that, but that might make these easier. But just so far, you've described this process, which is like standard, like, you know, sociocracy or participatory budgeting. But there's nothing about that yet that isn't consistent with the just a classic company set up, depending on how you structure voting internally, like to how you allocate shares. Yes, yes and no, because you're in a, no, you're in a fully decentralized environment. You can have members to say actually no to your plan and say, I don't like it. And if these members have a higher voting power, right, because they've been longer with the organization or um, they, they've uh, done more work in the past, your plan could stop. In a hierarchical traditional thing, this isn't the case. The boss says, we need that plan. You build the plan, Wolfowitz. I want to see that next week. End of story, right? Well, wait, um, that wait, can... But that, that's confusing two things. That's confusing the corporate structure with just the common way it gets organized. It doesn't have to be. I'm just trying to check. Like, that, that, that's just, I mean, I would argue that's not inbuilt in the corporation. It's because hierarchical structures traditionally have worked really well. I mean, we may be in a period where that's changing, right. but. But let's uh, keep running. Let let's me, bracket yeah, that. Let's, let's yeah, I, guess, I think Rufus's core point, you know, like this sounds like my old holocratic organization. So like, I think that's the thing is that you can run a holocracy that's not a DAO. But I think the interesting bit of your guys' system, it sounds like is this value allocation and contribution. Traffic. Built in. So I'd love to get yeah, let you get to that bit. So please do carry on. So great. So so let's say the plan passed now. It's on chain. We have, so we have an on chain record that's immutable, right? You cannot modify this anymore. And you can prove that it was there. It has happened. Who has participated and what have you said, right? Um, in that participation. And that's the source of truth that the DAO is now a container for, right? A container for the first agreement that we reached here, right? And there can be over, like in, in, in the Haifa DAO, there can be hundreds of these agreements, right? And they all build on top of each other and say, this is the way how we move our organization forward, right? So you've done a quest now, Wolfus. You, your plan is through. Let's let's wait for it in four weeks, right? In the meantime, Theo starts digging, right? Um, he sees that's like a recurring kind of activity. You know, he likes to do that. Um, Alex likes to do that, and now he's applying for a role actually as a as a digger, right? To, to dig these trenches, right? Uh, he describes his role on his own, right? And says, this is kind of routine work. This is at a, what we call like a B3 salary band. You know, this is uh, regular work. Uh, it's not strategic work, but it's, it's important work for the organization, right? He puts it out as another proposal, right? To say, I want to take on this long-term role, right? I'm here for you guys. I'm digging, digging, digging all, you know, all, every time you need me. Puts it up there. Again, the DAO jumps in and says, okay, new proposal is out there for this role. We voted in. And he passes, you know, so great. Now he has that role and he has a recurring, you know, commitment now. He, he can also decide what level of commitment he wants to put into that role. You know, it doesn't mean it's 100% committed. It doesn't mean he has to be with us full time. This isn't an employment contract, right? This is just to say, I'm here. I commit myself 50% to, to digging these trenches, right? Um, and here's, here's what I'm doing. Now, um, does that really mean that Theo has the capacity and he's really doing what he says he would do, right? This is now up to us to see what happens next, right? So he can start in this role now for the next one, two, three months, right? We see what happens, right? Um, now, if nothing happens, Theo never, you know, started to do anything, we would then come back to say, this role isn't valid, right? We're not gonna extend your role, right? And we have two ways to do that. At the end of the period, we say, it didn't do much, you know, I'm not gonna vote for you in the next round, right? Or we can actually say, we suspend that role. You know, I have a reason to say, I don't see any progress, let's suspend that. And then this is another proposal that suddenly comes up and we all vote on this together, right? To say, yep, theory didn't really do the work, let's suspend this role, right? But but let's not go that route. Let's say he did the work and <laughs> everything looks great, but suddenly we see, okay, maybe there are more trenches coming up. We need better structure for the organization. And this is where you now see additional sort of elements coming up inside the organization to create, let's say, a circle for specifically for trench digging, right? What do, we're specializing in that now. We're becoming a service. We might recognize other DAOs out there who need our help. Right? We also need trenches. And then suddenly we have to you know, ramp up our operation and say, we need more people. 
put them into these new structures in the circles and they all go through the same process right they're going to apply for roles right they may do short quests you know projects pilots uh, to see where they're taking this um, and we're becoming now a growing more thriving organization right ready to connect to others and offer our services to others out there right um, and this is I, uh, how I see sort of the, the ecosystem now growing, right? Supporting each other, being here uh, to to offer what we do inside the inside the boundary of the organization through these agreements that we are taking through these um, maybe later on some policies that we need to structure this even more, the circles and the budgeting process that's also built into the DAO, right? We can exactly see um, how we you know if funds are coming in, how we you know, give them out to the circles and how people can now apply for more roles, more work and, and a more growing and efficient organization. Yeah, um, yeah. Could I, so let's to, to bring back. So how do you decide on what my trench digging is worth, say compared to Rufus's trench planning in role? Let's say, how, how do you decide on what the kind of remuneration of that is? And then if we have like, you know, multiple trench diggers, as you kind of said, as we expand, and I say, hey, I'm digging trenches way better than Rufus. I deserve more compensation than him as a result. So sort of how do you reconcile that? So how do you set it in the first place? And then if there are disputes and say like, you know, I say that I don't think he's digging trenches well, or we have those conflicts, how does that be, how's that reconciled in terms of compensation? So those are my two questions there. And I can take the, this one. I, I think what's really important and to re respond to Rufus' question as well, what is different and really important to consider is that the people coming in are defining their own roles and they are getting um, voted on those roles. So you could come in and say, I want to be a B7 from the start, you know, after a week of being in the ecosystem and you go, I'm the best in the world to dig, uh, you know, the best digger in the world. You post this proposal and the members of the DAO will say, sorry, but you're not, you know, it's, it's not uh, aligned. Uh, we don't vote for that because there's a disconnect between what you are uh, proposing and what you are offering, you know. So it's a sense making from uh, the members um, uh, through voting, if you like, that regulates this. So uh, to your example, Theo, if, some, if you come in and you say, I'm a, uh, much better than you, I should be a B4, whereas you, uh, you are a B3, then you're comp completely free to post a proposal and to position it at B4. If everybody else, uh, you know, if the members at 80% of unity think that that's true, because they have seen that you were much quicker, much motivated, much more motivated, etc., then your wall passes and you are getting more remuneration than uh, your colleague. You know? so, so it's kind of, you, you have salary bands then basically. Yeah, it's yeah, salary, ba salary bands, salary bands and people voting. voting. It's really yes, clear. And I, yes, would, I would maybe I would love to add, okay. Okay. add to that. Well, let, let France finish <laughs> and then we'll move to Sask. Um, so these are, there's essentially a broad spectrum of ways we are able to compensate human beings. And these are essentially, you know, what Joachim and Alex mentioned is almost quest-based or role-based in which you're able to also figure out different ways to measure. When we come back to the, to the aspects of actually quantifying and measuring value, it's always a mutual agreement between the DAO and the person taking in that role. For something, sure. like, um, for something like going back to something simple like trench digging, I personally would actually uh, have uh, my voice in the DAO to say, actually, let's do that as a bounty, where it's actually simple value going in. And as soon as that proof of contribution goes out, the bounty would be claimed and that remuneration yeah. would be solved. In the other side of the spectrum, there, there's also additional things that right now we're uh, contemplating and experimenting on where you can have, like, for example, there's other ways of uh, measuring or quantifying human beings contribution that could go to, for example, a universal earned income where we can go, for example, with uh, indigenous communities around the world and if it's their own value-based networks and if that community, that DAO itself understands that there is, you know, for example, a healer that is wanting to give that uh, contribution from a place of abundance that doesn't have to be sold in an open market, a community can choose to provide a uh, token value to that and liquidity from treasury to that. So that's on the other side of the spectrum that allows you to really encompass contributions that are much more complex than a reduction is sort of value in value out. And the spectrum in between kind of paints a whole bunch of opportunities. 
Yeah, but so I just want to ask a question then. Sorry, Theo, maybe you had a question. Yeah, no, I was just going to say thanks. And I don't so guys, want to I, I just, what I'm struggling. So I can get sometimes that a label's useful, but I don't understand in all of this, what you just described as compensation is exactly how one can do, have done and can do compensation, except that it's like a partnership where, I mean, I don't know, we haven't yet got into like who holds what voting weights and how they get distributed over time. But like I wrote stuff before DAOs in this governance document I'm not saying I'm anywhere original, but the idea that A, you allocate equity or voting rights over like compensation to people over time. I mean, you know, law for, you know, classically, the classic version of a two tier was like law firms, you know, there were partners and there were non partners and partners got to vote compensate, basically decide in a big partners debate meeting how the partner pie got divided. And they, you know, there's loads of these models for like hundreds, if not thousands of years. And I think we're I think we're moving to a world where there's more of this. I think that's wonderful. I'm I'm in total agreement about that. And, and what I hear is that there's more participation in in getting to set those. But I just still don't get in what the DAO. Like I can go to a company. I could just be like set up a company. I how, hand out relevant types of shares. And what you're describing is like just how compensation gets decided on in most organizations. It's just that in most organizations, there's a more limited set of people. Who, who do that. And normally it's also a scale point, which is, you know, it's why cooperatives have notoriously not scaled in human history very much, worker cooperatives. And, you know, you, you can count on the fingers of a mutilated hand, the famous examples, mostly of them happening because it doesn't scale. You know, there's reason we end up with hierarchical structures of that kind. So I'm, I'm just like in all of that, why can't I just do that in a company? I, I don't get where the DAO, or you're not saying you can't do, I'm not saying that, but how does the DAO make any difference to that model of like different people I, I, i'm just not getting other, it, although it might be symbolically important or you know i can see other things like it's hard to incorporate international companies currently in the world it's quite complicated um i've tried to do it i've, I've tried to be what i call micronationals like small entities with people in multiple jurisdictions like one of the points you mentioned is you don't seem to be paying payroll tax anywhere probably like and that's let alone the cost it's a huge overhead. You know, everyone's a self-employed contractor, it sounds like in this model. You don't have employee rights. But, you know, I even, you know, to get even more concrete, what happens if a member of the DAO makes a contractual commitment to somebody else on behalf of the DAO? How does that get managed? Does that bind? You know, I'm about to go to another topic, but I just want to come back. I shouldn't come to that first. How does the DAO make this different? Why can't I set up a company today and just have people who have different sets of voting rights? And vote on participatory budgeting. Sure, yeah. sure. I, I mean, totally. You, you can do this. Nobody's stopping you. You can create your own company for things. But you have to keep in mind, then you suddenly create a barrier for people who have to enter your company. They become employees, right? They are having contractual agreements. If they want to go that well, fine. You have your company. Well, they have to become employees. Have to they have to have contractual agreements. They, right. they have Contract to be, Let's they leave have it to at be, that. They have to be oh, shareholders and they have to have, maybe if they do work, they have some contractual agreement. But you're saying you don't have contractual agreements. No, we don't. We we don't you have don't. contract. We have no lawyers no. in our company. No, no, wait, wait, wait. We you don't have any lawyers market. yet. Contract but saying, agreements. <laughs> but you don't have we, any agreements with your investors. Agreement. You're saying your investors invested what contract. sounds like several million, but without any contractual agreements? Smart oh. contract agreement, which is way more worth than any Smart contract paper. <laughs> yes. So, so, yes. But, but they got okay. tokens, which are these smart contracts, which is their right. So they got, they got given some to DAO tokens of some kind. Yeah, so so there are one question, I just got a question. No, I got, I got a genuine <laughs> question. Though. So what happens if you, someone within your DAO were to defraud somebody? So this ha comes up frequently in smart contracts, that there's errors and someone makes an error. And imagine someone found some way to exploit your DAO, even someone in the team. Would you not sue them in a court of law? Or would you just say, no, no, the smart contract permitted it. We're going to, you know, I mean, I, I can cite examples where this has happened with DAOs. Um, I mean, the most famous was the one where I wrote my first post about this, the DAO back in 2016, where there was an error in the code, most of was stolen, and they, they reversed the chain. So I'm just trying to ask you guys, are you saying that you stand by that you just have smart contracts, you don't have any traditional legal relationship, and should a fraud occur, or someone even defraud your investors, they would, but do so within the kind of smart contract, there would be no legitimate or legal recourse by them. I just want to check that. I can answer uh, that. 
if you yeah. want to give it a try, I think you know yeah, you're going you to get yeah. different okay. answers from multiple DAO members because it's also a decentralized <laughs> movement. My personal view in this is essentially what we're actually following here is the common natural law that over imposes a lot of the other things that we see it and that is represented by a smart contract. So if you are in the sick system and you're defrauding the ecosystem, you must not understand that you're actually able to provide your highest form of contribution and your passion and purpose into a system that honors that contribution and reciprocates it with everything it can. So it must be very, uh, there must be some non-understanding if this, that fraud happens there. And of course, you know, what another layer of what I see that we're building these tools for is essentially, I know from my highest perspective that the highest technology is the human. So what we're creating is this vehicles to allow humans to evolve in a personal development where we're all standing together as sovereign human beings. And in that place, you know, I think there is a wonderful opportunity for people to make mistakes and learn. And I don't think necessarily, depending on, on what sort of uh, challenge or defraud model you would have, but for the most part, you know, I kind of would let natural law revolt, uh, resolve itself. That would be my personal perspective as one DAO member. But I would love to allow <laughs> Alex and Yaki to... Yeah, Alex, go company. ahead. Yeah, I would like to just add uh, uh, one element. I think there's a central piece that we are, uh, we are not taking into account, which is the DAO itself. So the DAO is an, organ an organism that is actually the source of truth uh, that has, you know, all the agreements voted in and, uh, you know, recorded on the blockchain. And also the second element is that it's all contribution centric and uh, contribution based, as in we are not talking about equity, anything like that, power games or anything like that. It's you contribute, you get tokens, you get voice. That's as simple as that. You don't contribute, you remove your commitment, you can just slide and, and leave the DAO if you want to. You don't get any more tokens from this moment sure. on. So. Uh, considering these two things and considering the organism as being a body uh, that has sense making, common sense, you know, natural law uh, embedded into, into it, then there's a mitigation of these kind of risks because everything needs to be voted on, otherwise it doesn't exist. If it's not on chain, it doesn't exist. So we don't need lawyers, we don't need accountants, we don't need uh, a lot of this, uh, we don't need HR because people are coming in to the DAO because they want to fulfill a purpose they have and they want to propose themselves their roles. So we are removing all this complexity, these legalities. And uh, what remains is the pure agreement on chain that is voted on by the 80% the unity that we have configured for our DAO. Parameters can be changed, of course, but the, the principle remains the same. So the, the DAO decides, you know, not the boss, not the partners, you know, all of that goes away. So can you just answer my question then, the specific one? So if someone were to defraud the DAO, but do so consistent with the smart contract, you're saying, let's say the investors, the people who bought tokens or others, or anyone else would have no, would not only would have no legal recourse, but would not take legal recourse in a traditional court of law. I'm just checking that question. Yeah. Totally depends on what the... No, no, it's, it's, a simple, it's a simple yes or no there, relatively, just to check. Would you, there be legal recourse or not? Um, yeah. I have my response, but friends... I think that would probably go into a DAO voting itself. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we would yeah. vote on the fact that we need legal recourse or not. Uh, and um, yeah, that would be the decision of the DAO as, a, as an organism to pursue or not the legal, you know, uh, the, the legal uh, right, action right. Uh, based on the nature of the fraud, based on, uh, you know, the, the fl uh, flow that was there um, in the smart contract, you know, because yes. there's also some accountability that can be... Mm. Um, taken right. so it's it's really Sir Wolfus. This is really an option the DAO has. We could incorporate, you know, not a problem. Yeah. There's even a Wyoming DAO LLC, you know, available yeah. specifically for smart contract based organizations. We could do this, you know. Yes. Uh, we may even do this if we get into sort of more formal contractual, you know, 
venture capitalist arrangements they yeah. want to see an incorporation right they can't work with something that's not incorporated anywhere right? I, I get all but, that. i just mentioned it because before someone said i'm just specifically someone i think there was the phrase in the call i'm sorry i get all of that was where someone said but there are no contracts what's special about dows when i asked what's different about dows just rewinding five minutes where someone said something and i'm paraphrasing like what's special is we don't have we don't have all that legal stuff. We don't have contracts. We're not employees. We don't have the law. You know, that's what's that's what's amazing and special. And that's why I'm kind of asking. I was just bringing probably one concrete case because the thing is, all of this stuff sounds beautiful. Like just for me, it sounds, I've read the history of many intentional communities. I'm dedicated to seeing many more, for example, intentional communities, teal organizations. And most of the stuff that's there in traditional companies or other stuff or even in traditional law is built up because things went wrong at some point and the world it's like you know you could we we can sing john lennon's imagine a lot you know i love that song but it's also that joke from the dilbert cartoon where you know the dog bird comes along he says to dilbert wouldn't it just be beautiful you know dilbert if everyone laid down their arms just loved each other and there was just peace on earth and dilbert says oh that's such a beautiful beautiful idea dogbert and in the next caption you have dogbert saying because i could then conquer the world with a butter knife <laughs> and the thing is like the issue is the prison dilemma or defectors in all of this we have built up you know it's like why is a rental contact 20 pages long not because we're bad people but because over the years people have gone into arguments like what happens if you don't repair the roof what happens if you don't notify the landlord of the leak in the roof and then it gets bad all of this stuff has accumulated and i'm just a little bit like hey you're saying we're in this space, there's no contracts, there's, there's none of this stuff. Like, what there happens like to discrimination? We Do have I have any recourse if I feel that the DAO's discriminated against me for being this way or that way, you know, for being a woman, for being gay, for being whatever? What recourse do I have against the DAO if I feel that some bunch of people with a majority ganged up on me? Like, what happens? I think there's something to, to consider as well, uh, which is that we come from a different place, uh, as in everybody joining the DAO had to unlearn a lot of uh, the things that they have learned before and relearn a new way where we uh, respect this organism and we follow the rules, right? So, um, uh, and it, it may seem a bit naive, but it's completely, you know, we have a game guide, we have different... Uh, uh, tools like that where we and the way we interact with each other, uh, you know, are integrating respect and uh, consideration, uh, deep listening, etc. So uh, there's, um, it's not just, you know, a structure that we use exactly like we would use a corporation. I think there's something more profound, more deeper there, where we have a common purpose and it's on the blockchain, you know, it's recorded on the blockchain. So if you join, it's because you want to fulfill that purpose. If not, you can go to another DAO. Or if, if not, if it's not for you, you can go back to the, you know, the corporate world and what we know currently. But um, the space we are operating in is really different in terms of uh, values, you know, uh, compared to what we know, what, what is main, mainstream currently. Mm, right. so, and, 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 and question and, is, what happens that, when you have a bad actor? Have you had one bad actor so far? Like you can talk about it anonymously. Have you had anyone who didn't behave well that, for example, they claimed compensation and it was voted down and they were upset about it? And what, how did that get dealt with? Sure. Many times, Rufus, many times. Um, but can you describe one example and what happened? Yeah, who wants to take this one? They can be called them Mr. or Mrs. X, you know, or whatever, Ms. X or Mr. X, and what <laughs> the dispute was about and what happened. Um, we've had situations where, for example, someone claimed a salary when the when the DAO engines we were not seeing that the user interface and we, people were able to claim more of the redemption that they would have. We went back to that member and said, "Look, this is what happens. We have that in chain. You're able to give it back." The member was saying or was not able to pay it back at that time. So what they paid back it was in 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 Haifa DAO tokens, and the rest was forgotten. It was yeah. Take it, enjoy it, leave it. It was. But a was that a dispute? But was that like they disagreed? Like I'm interested in the case where someone says, "No, I don't agree. I think I was entitled to the money, 
Not that I agree that I should pay it back, but is there a case where you had someone who's like, I've done something and there's an actual dispute, like there's an actual disagreement about what happened? Because that sounds like the person agreed they got paid too much and they gave it back. I'm interested in cases where you actually had genuine disagreement, not, not even necessarily in bad faith, but people with two distinct views about reality and what happened. Um, I'm also very conscious that you guys have potentially got another call. Yeah, so yeah, we don't yeah, want yeah, to. We need to go, but uh, <laughs> yeah, well, to, to respond really quickly uh, to this one, because I, I think it's an important point. We always have the blockchain as a source of truth. So the, the um, variation of perception is quite limited when you have the transaction on chain, right? So uh, if you have to do something and it's written on, on chain and you don't do it, then you know you could argue, yes, I've done it my way and it's not your way, etc. But in that case, that comes back to the DAO as an organism to uh, judge if it was uh, fulfilled or not. You know, so there's another proposal coming up. What should we do with this problem we have? of somebody being paid for something that was not uh, fully completely understood or, you know. So we always come back to the same mechanism, you know, um, contribution in the center, blockchain as a source of truth. And, uh, you know, and this, uh, um, as I was saying, the context of uh, a new way of interacting and, and a new way of thinking, sense making, uh, you know, uh, around different issues. Yeah. To Thank end, I just want to say, I, mean, yeah. I, I just want to acknowledge you guys, if I can, just, I know they've got to go with you. I just want to say, thank you so much. You've been very, very generous to my, can, my, uh, my challenging questions, maybe, but I also think it's amazing what you guys are up to always. I, it sounds like you come from a background really of committed to transformation. Um, and I'm really curious, you know, I ask, I hope, uh, well, I don't know, but these questions, but I'm genuinely very, very curious. And sure, if you sure, read the no governance problem. proposal I sent in the chat, I had, and we still do keep a ledger of different contribution types that we run at Life Itself and kind of a handout equity in that way. It just isn't on chain. But I just want to say thank you so much for your time and your listening and your response. And You're maybe welcome. we can follow up, but uh, yeah. best of luck. Yeah, thank you uh, so much. That would be great. Really, really great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Connect. Pleasure. Great conversation. Best of luck on your next call. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.